What's up guys, ViperFV here, and today, today I have the TBS Tracer Starter Kit. Um, I actually just watched, it was about a couple weeks ago, I was watching uh, the whole live stream from Trappy over at TBS about how this is like their 2.4 gigahertz solution to what the Immersion RC Ghost is pretty much doing. Um, if you don't already know what the RC Ghost, uh, Immersion RC Ghost is, it is pretty much a 2.4 gigahertz signal uh, that is... As you can say, it's supposed to be a lot less latency than your typical Crossfire or even your Free Sky Link that you're normally using in your FPV quadcopter. Um, now, why would this be important, really? Um, well, if you're really a racer, I think it comes down to it maybe in a freestyle pilot and you want the lowest latency between your radio and you know your quadcopter, this might actually be something beneficial to you. Um, but... What I'm going to be doing is I picked this up with my own money. I went out and picked it up. This really wanted to check it out because I'm already on the Crossfire system. And um, when I switched over from FreeSky back a um, while back, maybe 2017, um, to Crossfire, um, I didn't notice a difference in latency when I switched over from, to the 150 hertz mode. Now, the whole thing with Crossfire is that it's actually dynamic. It has 150, and then it can work down. Um, that is pretty much increasing or increase decreasing your latency um as you fly away from the quadcopter or f fly away from your range on your radio um but so this right here is supposed to be locked at 250 hertz which is about i think four milliseconds they said maybe three i forget the exact nature of what they said um but so i wanted to pick it up because i was really interested to see if i would actually feel a difference um so what i'm doing today is unboxing this thing on the bench setting it up on one of my quadcopters um now, I am on the Crossfire system, so it's going to be fairly easy for me to set up. Um, but I'll go over some differences that you might make if you're coming over from the Free Sky or from uh, Fly Sky. Before I forget, if you found this video helpful, go ahead and give this video a like, subscribe, and um, video link, uh, video link, no, product link in the video description uh, if you want to check this out. It is an affiliate link, and it does help support the channel and help, help support me, of course. So uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and go to the bench and uh, get on with the video. All right, so this is the TBS Tracer. This is actually the um, starter kit for the Micro TX. They also will have this available in the um, smaller version to fix like the X lights and those smaller form factor radios. Um, they also do have an adapter too. You can put it on your TBS Tango 2 if you want. Um, maybe this will show a lot of interest and maybe they'll make this a TBS Tango 2 with the Tracer already built in. Uh, that might be helpful if some people just want to go all out with the TPS Tracer. Um, some people might, especially if you're a racer. That's what I'm hearing anyway. So I haven't flown it yet at all on this video. Um, but I just wanted to go ahead and make everything, all the videos and set everything up and show you guys what I do. So um, so what it comes with here, now it's going to come with three receivers. Um, it also comes with this inverter. If you were on like the QX7 and you need to do the inverter mod on your radio, it does come with that, so you're already all you have to do is wire that up. Um, does come with some extra wire. Comes with these antennas. These are the antennas that you're going to be putting on the receiver, and actually going to be using these as diversity antennas. So you're going to have two of them on each receiver. So they're really actually tiny compared to the Crossfire receiver. Let me see if I can find one of those for you. As you can see, the, the difference is a lot different and this probably be a lot nicer especially on like a micro or a smaller three inch or smaller quadcopter if you wanted to put the tracer on it and then we also do have um the receivers let me take one out of the package and show you um, it does come with three of them i actually already put one in a quadcopter ready to get it all set up um, but this is the receiver let me zoom in because these things are super tiny okay so i mean how big is that? I mean, this thing is tiny. It's about the same size as the Nano. As you can see, here's the Nano receiver. <clears throat> and it actually wires exactly the same way. So if you're on the Crossfire system already, um, you literally can just unsolder the wires here at your receiver and this wire in the same exact way onto this receiver. So, And you don't even have to change anything in Betaflight or anything when you're setting this up. So if you're already on the Crossfire system, that's pretty much... You're pretty much ready. Only thing you have to do is set up your radio, maybe make a different radio. If you're going to be um, just swapping modules in the back, then you can just set it up on the same radio as well. Um, but so those are the receivers there, and it has the diversity here. You can see it has the two plugs. 
and we do have our bind plug. So it's exactly the same layout as a crossfire receiver. Um, so let me go just talk to you real quick about what these are. So if you're curious how we're going to be wiring it up, um, this first one here is negative. This one is 5 volt power. This one is TX. And this one is RX. So this one will be wired to an RX pad. This one will be wired to a TX pad on the same UART on your flight controller. Really simple. Same way as Crossfire. Um, and then, of course, we do have these here. And then let me get my radio out. It's actually already plugged into my radio. So we do have this as well. It has these little white clips here. Um, just a micro receiver already. I'm not going to pull it out. USB-C. So you can do updates via TBS agent. Um, and then, like I said already, comes with the antenna already. Um, they will have tuned antennas, aftermarket ones you can probably buy for 2.4. Um, haven't seen any of those come out yet on any of the vendor's sites or TBS's site as far as I'm aware. But that probably might change by the time this video is out. So check that out. I might leave some links to those down below too as well if you want to check something out like that. Um, but yeah, so that is pretty much it. What we're going to be doing is wiring this up to my existing quadcopter here. This is my Stark frame that I built just recently on the channel. Um, so that's that. So I'm going to go ahead and take the top plate off, get this old Crossfire receiver um, pretty much off, show you where I, how I wire this one up. Um, I'll also advise you if you're already coming off Pretty much, this is just how you would wire it onto this JB actually F7 flight controller. This is what this is on. Um, so without further ado, let's go ahead and uh, take this top plate off. And we're going to pick out our wire here. So use the red wire for 5 volt, uh, five volts. Use the white for one of the receiver TX. And then yellow as well. So we get the black for ground. So we've got our wires here. Let me put that closer there. And it doesn't really matter what wire you're going to be picking for which one. And just make sure you remember which one that you use for it. Um, I'll probably just go in order how I have it laid out here. So first things first, I'm going to go ahead and pre-tin the pads on the uh, tracer receiver. So what we're going to be doing here is we're going to be soldering are using these ones out here on the JBF7 flight controller. Uh, five volts for the receiver, ground, R1, and T1. Um, so R1 is going to go to the um, yellow wire that we already soldered up here, this one. And then my white wire is going to go to the TX1. Um, so this is a real simple. Um, now for your free sky, um, you know, pretty much you have to just take your, your old receiver and solder on just like this, <laughs> um, depending on what UARTs you have available. But you do need to do um, RX and TX to be on the same UART. So if you're using UART 1, you have to be on the same one. This is how I went ahead and mounted the antennas on the arms, just right underneath the two zip ties. Um, I probably will, hopefully, maybe find something to 3D print or something to put on this to make it look a lot nicer. Uh, but for right now, this should be really nice orientation so we can get really any range from any direction it's going. Let me show you how to bound, bind this real quick, actually, right now. Go ahead and do that as we speak. Zoom out here. All right, so this is my TX16S TX. from Radio Master. I actually really do like this radio. Have a review on it if you want to check out that review. Um, but we're pretty much what we're going to be doing is uh, going over to our um, model select section. Now, if you're on Crossfire and you have a Crossfire set up, then you can go ahead and just copy another. That's what I did is I copied um, this configuration for my Crossfire. And then I just went ahead and made a new model and called it Tracer and whatever. Um, so if you need to make a new model, I do have a video on making a new model. Um, now the only thing you do is when you're in your model, you set up your new model. So let me select this. When you go into your page for your model, 
So you go in your page of your models, make sure when you set up your model that you do have this set to crossfire. Maybe one day they'll have it set as a crossfire. I'm not sure if they'll ever change it. Um, but yeah, just make sure that's set to on. So then your crossfire module is powered up. So the radio knows that to use that. Um, so what I'm going to do is we're going to bind up real quick to our setup. So on this radio, what I have to do to get to this screen is I have to go over to system and then just crossfire. And then I can get to my Mac micro TX right there. So that's real simple. And then right here, we can set up our output power and everything just like a crossfire system. So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, click on bind right here. Then we're going to get a battery and power up the quad. So make sure you can easily get to the um, bind button. And actually already bound. Um, but if yours doesn't show the green light, um, then you're going to have to go ahead and press the button. So sometimes it can pick up that you want to bind a receiver and already pick it up. So that's pretty much what it did there. Um, it might also maybe show an update or something like that um, if you need to do that. But your bind button's right here on the receiver. So you just want to press that just once when it's powered up within about a minute of powering it up. And it will go ahead and get into bind mode if you're having a problem where it didn't pick it up right away. Um, but that's how you set that up. And then you have this. Everything in beta flight will be exactly the same if you're already on Crossfire. But if you're on FreeSky, let me jump on the computer real quick and show you where you, what you need to make sure that you have enabled in the um, configuration page and all that stuff. So let's go ahead and jump over the computer real fast and then we can wrap the video up. All right, so we're in beta flight. And just make sure that uh, if you're buying this up to a new flight controller, just make sure the correct UART is enabled on the UART you uh wire the receiver to so in my case i wired it to uart1 so if i have rx right here is checked make sure that nothing else is checked too if there's another one checked also the only one of these can be checked at a time i believe um, so then we're going to come over to receiver right here so if you're on free sky or whatever um, you might have it actually as serial based receiver already um, then you need to go ahead and come over here and just make sure crossfire is enabled. So if you already have crossfire, it's already pretty much working for you. Um, but if you're on SBUS, just make sure you change it over to crossfire. Um, then that pretty much should be it really on setting it up uh, from there. Um, so I'm gonna let you guys go actually on the video. Um, this is really just a setup video, just kind of get my, uh, set up my quads and then uh, hope, hopefully maybe you guys set up yours as well. Um, so. Stay tuned. I'm actually going to be doing a proper review on the TBS Tracer on the channel. Um, but I appreciate you guys watching. And this is Viper FV. And don't forget to like, subscribe. And I'll see you guys in a future video. Peace.